here. No, I do. You don't mind being here. I look forward to this. <laughs> My wife asked me that when I got home. I walked, I walked in the uh, yeah. in the door last night. She goes, do you even want to be here? <laughs> Yes, I want to be. Here. You didn't get tossed out, did you? <laughs> no, she didn't toss me out. She has before. I was okay last night. Draymond's not going to play tomorrow. He's going to be uh, cautious. Uh, he's still improving, but we feel more comfortable uh, giving him one more day. And then uh, it's tomorrow, Wednesday. And then we've got six days till the opener. So the plan is to to start practice and play him on Friday, and he'll be ready for the opening. Are you thinking of resting him? No, you know, we did that last night, um, but I think everybody wants to go. And uh, these last two games will be um, more um, dress rehearsal-ish, if that's a word, a phrase. Um, and we haven't really done much personnel uh, scouting report stuff. We've been more concerned with what we're doing. Um, so the next two games will be more of our normal game day routine with, uh, with scouting reports and uh, matchups and tendencies and that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure uh, everybody but Draymond will play tomorrow, but that could change too. We'll, we'll see how everybody's feeling tomorrow. Who's going to make the trip? It's Vegas. So. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of look for um, these last week as far as determining which guys to keep for a final roster spot. You know, G League considerations. Yeah, it's really um, something that we just have to hash out, and you know, ultimately the decision will be uh, Bob's with uh, with our input. And I imagine at some point later this week, uh, a few of us will sit down and and decide on the best course of action um, and obviously there are a lot of uh, different scenarios with the two-way contract that we have available and uh, as well as a, a potential roster spot so a lot of different things could happen we're not sure how it's going to go yet what have what you seen out of uh, McKinney from the first, uh, first he's week? been good you know he's very athletic and um, good size he's got the potential to be a very good defender and uh, I've seen him make some shots so um, I think Alfonso's uh, had a nice camp, and uh, so is uh, Daniel. Daniel's had a good camp. He's impressed us. Um, I've said it many times uh, in the last week that this group has been fantastic. Tyler comes in and changes games with his ball pressure and his speed, and Marcus gives us a pick-and-pop ability that uh, maybe we uh, don't normally have uh, from that spot. Um, so a lot of good... A lot of good stuff, and um, we just got to sort it out. How important will these next two games be for those guys? Uh, I guess it, you know it's possible that you know somebody has a big breakout game and that weighs heavily. But really, you you take every day into account. It's not just uh, not just the games. Every practice matters too. Uh, you don't really. Um, you know, you you use the experience you've gained uh, to your advantage, and um, I think it, it matters to have been through the playoffs, deep into the playoffs uh, for you know many years now. Uh, so I think we have a comfort level going into the season where we've got a lot of a lot of continuity and a lot of talent, and we feel very confident. And then it's just focus on the process and uh, put together a good week and a good month and build momentum. Do you feel like the uh, Warriors-Lakers rivalry is kind of a sleeping giant in the NBA? Is that the kind of line that the both teams are really good Yeah, this is probably the first time it uh, it's lined up. Uh, did Sleepy Floyd get his 29 against the Lakers? I mean, that would probably, in one quarter, yeah, that would probably be the, the biggest moment. And we played them a couple times in the playoffs in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, yeah. So, for Warriors fans, that's probably the biggest moment of the Laker uh, Warrior rivalry. But uh, 
sure the Lakers never really looked at it as a rivalry all those years um, when they were dominating. But um, this will be fun. You know, same division, and uh, obviously, you know, both teams have a lot of talent, and the atmosphere is going to be great. Even in the preseason, I think uh, people are going to be really looking forward to it. Have you thought about how this play the staples on the I mean, it's been good when they were down those years, but what it might be like this year, especially when you're in there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Staples is a it's a different vibe. You know, it's uh, it's not like an Oklahoma City or Salt Lake where it's just noise and and um, you know intensity. It's more like, man, this is the cool place to be in LA tonight. You know, and it's uh, obviously um, it's been a very star-driven franchise, and uh, so for them to have LeBron uh, make Staples a uh, place to be and. And you, you feel, you'll feel that vibe, we'll feel that vibe as a visiting team when we're in there. I look forward to that. Toronto was very early, but what do you, I mean, they obviously got LeBron, that's a big one. What do you think about how they kind of fit around them? They got some random bets. Well, I think they've done, Lakers have done a good job in the draft the last few years, and they've got some nice young talent. And uh, LeBron makes everybody better. Doesn't matter what team he's on, they're going to be really good. Uh, and they've got guys who have been around the block, you know, Rondo and, uh, and JaVale. We know what JaVale can do. And, uh, so they're trying to put it together pretty quickly. It's not an easy thing to do, but um, you know, they're, they're going to be really good. No question, they'll get a lot better as the season goes on. How much, more, how, how much improvement have you seen from Damian over the last? Yeah, I think it's been a great few weeks for Damian just from the standpoint of gaining experience. Last night was good. You know, he saw some things that maybe he hadn't seen yet. Um, Phoenix ran some really good stuff, and they they spread you out. You know, they took 33 three pointers last night, and um, you know ran a very modern NBA offense with a shooting four man and a diving five, and that's not easy to hash out when you're the anchor. When you're the five man, you got to be able to communicate and sort it out. And I think uh, last night is a great film for him to have and. A lot of our practice today was dedicated towards defensive concepts. And uh, I'm really happy that um, we played Phoenix last night because of the pressure they put on us in that regard and happy with DJ's development uh, in camp. How have you seen JaVale's integration over there? How have you seen JaVale's integration with the Lakers? Integration with the Lakers? Yeah. I haven't watched any of it. Anybody? All right. Thanks.